In this video, we'll be talking about foiling or expanding. Now that word FOIL, that's an acronym. It stands for first, out, in, last. You don't really need to memorize it in order to do expanding. Uh, first of all, what is this even talking about? Let's say you want to multiply two things like this, two binomials, bi meaning two, so they have two terms each. You're multiplying these two binomials with each other. And well, one way to think about it is, you know, you're really just doing the distributive property. So you can think about it as, you know, oh yeah, you're multiplying this y minus 3, for example, to each of these. And uh, when you do that, you end up, it, that ends up being equivalent to saying, you know what, that's like, I'm going to multiply the y to both of these, and then I'm going to multiply the negative 3 to both of these. And so let's, let's do that out. Let's see what we get. Uh, y times y, so that's going to be y squared, right? Then uh, we have y times the 4, and they're both positive, so that's going to be plus 4y. Notice, by the way, this is where the acronym comes from. The first means, you know, you're doing the first, you're multiplying the first terms in both of these guys, right? The y comes first in both of these. And then you're doing the outer terms. The outer terms in this is the outermost, the y and the 4. Right? And then the inner terms, meaning this guy and this guy. And then the last is this guy and this guy. Right? But again, you can think about it as you just distributed the y to both of those. And now you're distributing the negative 3 to both of those. So the negative 3 times y is going to be negative 3y. And then the negative 3 uh, there. And then the negative 3 times the 4 is going to be, well, negative times positive is still negative. So that's going to be negative 3y. So that, there you have it. That's what you get when you FOIL that thing out. Now, you can go one step further and simplify because these middle two terms are like terms. And 4y minus 3y is going to be just positive 1y. So that's going to be y squared plus 1y, so just plus y, and then the minus 12. So that's in general how you expand, right? So when in doubt, you have to multiply two binomials with each other. You can just FOIL it out. Just basically do a distributive property for each term. And that should work. Now, that being said, there are three rules, and they're not really, uh, you know, something that uh, it, it, you couldn't figure out on your own, like if you were just doing out the foiling, but they come up so frequently, and sometimes it's, it's good to have them at your disposal to, to practice enough with them, so then that way you'll be able to answer questions a lot more efficiently. And here's what they are. One is, when you have A plus B, meaning two things added, squared, what is that equal to? What does that expand out to? So first of all, a lot of people initially think, well, can't you just distribute the two? Isn't that just like a squared plus b squared? Well, no, because a plus b squared, what that means is a plus b times itself, times another a plus b. And when you do that out, when you FOIL that out, you basically get a squared, and then you get plus a b plus another a b, right? Because b a and a b are the same thing multiplying. So anyway, you get AB and another AB, so that's plus 2AB, and then B times B is B squared. So really, in general, whenever you have something uh, that's like a, a binomial squared, then essentially it's the same thing as squared each of those terms. So you can think about this A plus B squared as it's really A squared plus B squared, but it also has this middle term, this cross product term, if you will, the 2AB term. Now, similarly, if you had a minus b squared, that again, you could always do it out, but to memorize it after you practice enough, that's always going to end up simplifying to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. The common thing that people do incorrectly here is they write that as a minus b squared. It's a reasonable mistake because that's a minus b, but minus b times another minus b, negative times negative is positive, so it's plus b squared in the end. The only difference between a plus b squared and a minus b squared is that this middle term is going to be plus versus minus. And finally, the third thing that comes up often is, uh, what if you had a combo of them, a plus b times a minus b, right? So instead of a plus b twice or a minus b twice, what if you had a plus b and a minus b? Well, that's always going to simplify to be a squared minus b squared. So here, for example, if this were... Uh, if that original question were y minus 3 times y plus 3, if this 4 were a 3 instead, uh, three instead, 
So y plus 3, y minus 3, if that's what we had to multiply out, instead of foiling it out, you could just use a trick. Well, that's just going to be y squared minus 9. Because that's the first term squared minus, and then the second term squared. So y squared minus 3 squared. So that way it just, it's a way to bypass foiling it out if you have that memorized, which if you do enough problems, you'll it sort of would come up anyway, but it's good to know that pattern. Let's just do a couple of more problems now, applying that. So let's take a look at this problem here. y squared plus 8, the whole thing squared. How would we answer that? So if we were to use that rule, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, let's just do, do that out. Here it's weird because what this term itself is x squared. And so you're squaring that first. So that's going to be, again, that first term squared. Just We could keep this rule in mind here. Um, keeping that rule in mind, we get that first term squared plus 2, and then times each term, 2ab, meaning 2 times the first term times the second term. And then plus that last term squared, 8 squared, which we know is 64. All right, so again, that's, that's all we're doing here. This squared plus uh, 2 times each of the terms, and then plus the second term squared, which again is 64. So now that we have that, we could simplify that, because x squared squared, that's going to be x to the fourth. And then this middle term, you could multiply the coefficients. 2 times 8 is 16, so that's 16x squared plus 64. So that's how you would do that problem. And finally, uh, a problem like this. Well, again, the same uh, same process. So you could again, you could foil it out. You could do four minus three y times four minus three y and do it out that way. Uh, but again, once you do enough practice with that, it's good to to see the pattern that that's just going to be that first term squared is so sixteen minus two times, and don't even think about it, just copy it down, that first term, and then the second term, and then plus that second term squared, 3y squared, right? So again, that guy squared minus 2 times each of them, plus the last guy squared. And simplifying that, we get 16, and then here, let's see, we got a 2 times a 4, which is 8, times another 3, uh, which is 24, so overall that's going to be minus 24y. And then finally, a really common misconception here is people just write this as 3y squared, but notice that the, the squared applies both to the 3 and the y, and so that's going to be 3 squared, which is 9y squared.